Jesus Christ made the most profound statements about worry that the world has ever heard in Matthew the sixth chapter. Therefore I say unto you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will put on. Isn't life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Hello guys, it's Chuck Grove with Foraging Truth again. I want to bring you out in the woods today. You can hear the birds chirping. It's actually very relaxing to be out and away from uh, my workplace for a while. And um, it's kind of an overcast day, but it's well appreciated after the last uh, week of hot drought that we've had. So. I wanted to bring you out today and teach you something that I've known for a long time and I'm going to show you um, one of my areas that I actually cultivated something that's wild but it's very medicinal so it's nice to have around plus it's a food source. So today we're going to talk about Polygonatum biflorum, Solomon seal and Smalacina Rasmosa, the false Solomon seal. But before we get into that, I want to share with you something that I've learned in my life that helped me get onto the path that I'm on now with my religion, my faith, which is Christ. My father knew that I was struggling while I was in the military and after high school with what I had been taught when I was a kid about God and what i have been taught by the world. And what I've been taught by the world was that we all evolved, and all these things kind of evolved from a primordial soup. And for some reason, that actually took hold in my mind, and I started believing that. So my dad sat me down one day, and a very smart man, very, very, very smart man, uh, he could do amazing things in his head that I would have to write down on tablet paper and probably fill up an entire ledger book to figure out. Um... He knew the periodic table front and back. He didn't have to look at it. He just knew it. So he was a lot more intellectual than I am. <laughs> but he sat me down one day and um, he said, why are you struggling with the belief of God? And I can see it in your life. And you can't hide things from a father. And that is in a biblical stance as well. And I said, well, Dad, I, and, you know, I was taught that these things, you know, you taught me through church and every, everything that he, he did, that God was the one that made everything. And the world's saying that God doesn't exist. So he pulled a leaf off a tree and he said, what's so significant about this? And I said, I don't know, it's a leaf. Uh, it gathers sunlight. He goes, exactly, it gathers sunlight. He said, what is so special about that? I said, I don't know. His answer, how does this leaf know that the sun exists and that it could use the sun? I don't know. And then he said, how much of the sun in a percentage does this plant use and how much can we harness with solar energy? This was, this was what got my attention. He said, this leaf is almost 100% efficient. Our knowledge, even today, it's 10 to 15 percent is what we can gather with uh, our solar energy. So I wanted to share that with you guys today. That this leaf can do what we can't do. And what is so significant about that? Well, it has a genetic line of code. And when we use our phones, it uses ones and zeros and it's binary. It means two. So, if we're using ones and zeros, if we can do all the things that I'm even doing with my phone today to teach you guys about a plant in the woods, and you make that three-dimensional and turn it into a living line of code, you'd want to ask who wrote the code. Well, I know who wrote the code. I read the book. But I wanted to share that with you guys today. It's a very powerful statement from a very, very influential man in my life. I miss him dearly. Now, even science today 
is starting to catch up to religion. It's scary. Now they're going into intelligent design because they realize that the numbers are not there in their favor for um, saying it just happened. To do that, it's like 10 to the... I forget how many zeros there is. It's unfathomable. It's just, it's amazing. You know, you, you, you can't have a living cell come into existence with oxidization and the solar damaging rays of the sun and decide that it's going to keep growing. It's going to die. So, with all these powerful statements, I suggest you to go and see if you can find what I found because it brought me a lot of peace. Now, polygonatum biflorum. Now, I've already dug some of these. So, let me get some of my plants here. So, let's get the two that I have here that I'm going to transplant into my own area. Solomon Seal. You can see what it looks like from the top. When you're looking through the woods, you're going to see a single stem. It has a couple joint spots. There's one here. Let's see if I can get a little closer. There's a joint here. And up here right by the leaf and you'll see that it joints in by the leaves as well where the leaves come out now the leaves are alternate one will come out here the next one comes out a little further down the next one comes out a little further down it just keeps going down to the end and they call this this is a fancy word this is the terminal of the stem the end of the stem and you'll notice that the end of the stem has a leaf and there's nothing growing out of that but how can we decide that this is Solomon seal well, polygonatum biflorum means it has two flowers that grow out of the bottom. And you can see those two stems coming out of the bottom side of the stem as it faces the ground. So you'll have two white flowers. And later on, those will turn into berries. Um, those berries are poisonous. You do not eat the berries. You do not make anything out of the berries. You spread the berries if you want to spread the plant. So let's get down to what we use. So you have the plant, you have the alternating leaves. You'll notice they're also, um, they're oval and the veins run the shape of the leaf down to the tip. So you'll have one sharp tip and an oval leaf. So we get down to the end and you have this. Look at that root. That's actually not a root, that is a rhizome. This is an underground stem. Now, what's unique about this and why they call it Solomon Seal is every year that this stem grew, let's see if I can show you better, there is a circular seal. So you can actually age this rhizome. Now, here's the roots. These are the roots. This is the rhizome. This is the part we're interested in. What does this plant do for you? Well, First off, for you fighters and uh, people that have abused your bodies in all kinds of um, extracurricular activities, um, motocross, uh, MMA, uh, even your job fields, maybe you were a soldier, maybe you're like I might myself, soldier corrections, I, I, I have a lot of joint damage and back pain. What does this root do? When you consume this root, after you properly prepare it, this root actually re helps your body replace the fluid in your joints. And I'm sure a lot of you can do this. You hear that? That's because I haven't actually eaten Solomon Seal in a while. But I'm getting back to it. So, what I like to do is I take the root... And I do not kill the plant. What happens is, why I dug these plants out is for you guys, I can actually go replant these if I do it quickly. So, how to harvest this to leave the plant and let, and let your, you know, come back to this plant later on down the road. I go a couple years back in growth and cut the root off. It's very easy to do. This plant, as you can see, this root grows along the ground, or this, sorry, this rhizome grows along the ground, and the roots come off of that. So it's very easy to uncover the leaf litter and some of the dirt, and you're going to see these seals. And you can go back two or three years, cut that off, and harvest the rest. So, 
let's see how old this plan is. Counting this year. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight years it took to get this. That's why we want to harvest in those ways. Or transplant into your own area. That's uh, the best way I can tell you to do that. So polygonatum biflorum. Bi meaning two flowers. It has the two flowers. They're actually not started yet, but I can see the two stems. I know I have polygonatum biflorum. There is also a polygonatum multiflorum, which will have a lot more stems. It looks like a spider going off each one of these. So, all in the family of the, pl the polygonatum family. These grow in many different countries. They are, uh, for you in Great Britain, that are, uh, I've, I've noticed I've had a lot of people following me from Great Britain. Um, you guys have your own types of Solomon seal. I'd suggest you to find out which ones are in your area and which ones you can use. Now, let's get into the false Solomon seal. And we'll look at them together. This is a very, very mature false Solomon seal. You can see some differences right off the bat. There's some differences in how the leaves look. But more importantly, the stem. Um, the stem, besides this is a very mature plant, so this is a very thick stem. Now you find them that look kind of like the one that I have down here that looks more like the regular Solomon seal. But the very this uh, the stem is darker in appearance. It has a lot more reds in by the uh, where the leaves attach to the stem. You see, it grows in the same fashion. They have alternating leaves as it goes down to the terminal of the stem, which is a fancy name for the end, the terminal. And what you'll have here, this one actually doesn't have it, and you'll have a cluster of flowers at the end, not the underside. There'll be nothing on the underside. When you get to the terminal of the stem, there'll be a little cluster of flowers that come out of here. And later on, these flowers will turn into berries. These berries are red in appearance, and a lot of Indians used to eat those or make juice out of them. They are edible. So, false salmon seal is... An edible has an edible berry. The regular Solomon seal, poisonous. You see the there's a very very. Um, we have to take these things very seriously. When you when you're out in the woods and you're looking at what you can eat, you do not want to eat the wrong thing. So the berries from the Solomon seal are poisonous. The berries from the false Solomon seal are edible. So and they're very medicinal. Now, there is a lot of medicinal um, things that can come from this plant. I personally don't eat it. I have to do a little bit more research in this because I always just pass by the salmon, or the false salmon seal. Oh, and what is the genus name? Well, it is Smilacina rasmosa, the false salmon seal. And you can even see that. Look how dark the stem is. And let's hold them up together. Let's see here. Look how green the stem is on the real salmon seal. They grow pretty much similar. But there is differences. You see how wavy the leaf is on this uh, mature Smilacina rasmo rasmosa. And then you have the polygonatum biflorum. So, salmon seal with the root. False salmon seal. Smalacina rasmosa, polygonatum biflorum. Now, let's go for a walk. Let me get you out of here. Okay, so, what I've done in my area is I've actually cultivated Solomon seal. And it's right in near my house. I'm not too far away from my house right now. And yes, I live in the middle of nowhere, and I love it. It is a wonderful thing. I mean, look at this. This is my backyard. And it just keeps going and going and going down over that hill. So I can go the whole way in to a river, take a swim. Maybe sometime I'll take you guys with me. So, as I'm cutting down through all this other vegetation... 
I have a pad here. I'm going to my polygonatum biflorum patch that I've taken many, many years to put in. Now, it starts here, you can see. And these ones have some flowers starting. This one doesn't. And this is just the start. Now I have uh, Smalacina rasmosa down here as well. But all Solomon seal. And as you go through, I can keep showing you more. I have to step around it. I want to step on the rhizomes. Here it is here. And here's another patch right here. I'm not seeing a lot of flowers yet. But they'll be here. So I hope you guys found this very informative. Um, the root of Solomon seal can be eaten in a survival situation. It'll taste like sweet potato. Not sweet potato, but sweeter like raw potato. And if you're going to use this for survival food, what you'd want to do is you'd want to boil the roots. Or, sorry, the rhizomes. It's easy to do, guys, but I would, I would like you guys to be as informed as you can when you're talking about these things after I teach them to you. You boil the rhizome, and a rhizome is an underground stem, or a subsurface stem, kind of like that of ginseng, has the rings of the plant that comes off the top of the stem, or sorry, that it comes off the top of the root, and you can age that uh, ginseng plant off of that rhizome that grows off the top of the root. So, again, I hope you found this very informative. I hope you guys stick with me. There's a lot more to teach. I have to go through and pick what I want to teach and maybe what I want to hold off until later on. A lot of mushrooms coming out. There's a lot of things going on. Um, if you guys would go to YouTube, everybody that's on Facebook would go to YouTube and Hit the like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. You guys know the game when you get down to YouTube. And follow me. Our following on Facebook is way bigger than our following on YouTube, which I'd like to kind of even those out if I can. But keep foraging. Chuck Grove with Foraging Truth. Have a, have a great day.